<clears throat> so I'm back at Sound by Singer with the man, the legend himself, Andrew Singer. The indispensable component to you. More than ever. Well, yeah, absolutely. You know, and that's actually the theme of this video. It is about can high-end audio survive without a healthy brick-and-mortar uh, ecosystem? Well, not to be self-serving, but yet, <laughs> no, it can't. No, not at all self-serving. Not at all self-serving, but no, I don't think it can. See, I think for me, we're distinguishing high-end audio, expensive. Let's say a system that would be $10,000 and up, mm -hmm. just to pick a number arbitrarily, right? So it's a lot of money. When you buy uh, a high-end car, whether yeah. it's a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or a Maserati, it, it comes fully assembled. You don't have Completely. to say, this engine goes with this transmission or something. Right? They've figured they out figured what it works out. with what right. for you. They High give you options, right. but those options are limited based upon the experience of the manufacturer. Right. High-end audio is, is, is a kit, right? It's which speaker, it's a computer. which amplifier. It, it's, which, it's right. It's like it's, what amp, what it's speaker. It's complicated, what, right? right? So that's something you can't really duplicate on the internet. But a high-end dealer has the experience of not just selling the stuff, but hearing it in all of the potential combinations of this preamp with this amp and this cable and this speaker and blah, 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 and have probably heard them in different rooms of their customers. And so, that's incredibly important. And that's incredibly important. Because, because in effect, um, when you look at specifications and say, hmm, this amplifier should sound really good with my speakers. Right. Well, maybe oh, yes, okay, maybe, no. maybe yes, maybe no, and <laughs> and the reason is because specifications really don't describe how speak how individual components sound. They just tell you what they do. And I would go so far as to say, having been on the end of this a couple of times, is if you ask uh, an amplifier manufacturer what speakers work well with this amp or vice versa, he would say speaker, anything. They they don't want to answer the question, or they won't. Or they won't answer the question, and vice versa. Right. So you, you you can't get that you can't get that kind of guidance even from the manufacturer of the speaker who has lots of experience with different amplifiers, but will rarely tell a customer which ones it because they don't want to offend their customers. But actually, they have far less experience. A manufacturer of an amplifier has far less experience with speakers than a dealer does. That's true. A dealer has much more experience because one of the first things any decent dealer does when he gets a new amplifier is to try it on a whole variety of speakers and sound, see what it sounds like, right. regardless of what the specs say, because those, you know, I used to say they're meaningless. I mean, maybe that's too much of a statement. Yeah, meaning. But they can but tell, they mean, they, they can, can be tell, misleading. Right. They can be misleading, and they, and they can also tell you what you can't do with an amp. It does tell you what you can do with an amplifier yeah. or with a pair of speakers. So... So, and the experience of putting all that together is not something that you can get on the internet. And you can't, I mean, yes, I know everybody likes to think that they can read up on the internet and then they can become an expert. It just doesn't happen that it's way. It's interesting that even magazines, Stir Up File the Absolute Sound, to, to cite two easy examples, rarely review entire systems. They, they review a speaker. Right. and then insert it into their system. They may Correct. have different amplifiers and stuff, but they insert it into their known reference system right. and make conclusions based on that. So the only thing they can tell you under those circumstances is how this amplifier works in this system. In this system. In now, their room. In their, their room. Et cetera, et cetera, in there with whatever right. cables and other things that they have. Now, it is true that people have given systems they may want to change a component. So they could say, well, I have to hear it in my own system to judge whether it sounds good. So high-end dealers have an answer for that that I think is a very good one. Okay. No problem. If you don't like it, return it for an exchange. Well, don't I get my money back? And I go back to the thing, what do I do with all the things that <laughs> people return because they didn't listen to my recommendation? And typically, um, I've found over the years that there are, are customers who just enjoy having things sent over to their house to play with and then return them. Mm -hmm. And then there are people that are really looking for an answer. Mm -hmm. And the answer ought to be, how do I make my system sound better? Not whether I, need, I want a new amplifier, unless your amplifier no longer works or I need a new, want a new speaker. So at the end of the day, um, it's my job to try to get them to get the thing that'll make the system sound better. See, because I think, I think a lot of the job, since I did it for a while, not as long as you, is, is hand-holding. 
And I think whether it's an inexperienced uh, customer sure. or someone with a lot of experience, they're not going to have as much experience as a good salesman. Right. Right. So um, I, I think the idea that a salesman would sell them the wrong piece is just stupid because they want to have happy customers that come back for more and send their friends over to, when, to me when I was doing it, right? So I would, I was kind of like the audio shrink. I would listen to mm -hmm. what they had, right. listen to what the kind of music they play, again, not duplicatable on the internet, uh, and sort of say, okay, I think here's what we should go then play what I think would be the good match if they were let's say, mm -hmm. buying an amplifier right? and try to have speakers as close to their speakers and, and say, yeah, that's kind of where I'm going, but I want it to be more like this. I want it to be a little more transparent. I want it to be... Blah. And then, okay, I got this one and I try that. So it's a dialogue. It's a conversation between customer and salesperson. And they're both on the same team. They both want to come up with the right result. And that's the thing that's very... Some it can be very difficult to establish, especially um, there's a there's a quality that I've noticed in the last several years, and when I say several, ten or fifteen years, where there's really I wouldn't describe it as a lack of trust because you know there's always a certain amount of requirements that you establish your bona fides with. With a customer when they walk in, they you know they can always that's that's a that's a something that um, I think is acceptable and reasonable. You have to show the customer that you're worthy of their trust. Yeah, you're hearing what right. they're saying. You're hearing what they're saying. But with the advent of tremendous amounts of information on the internet, um, the chat rooms. Uh, Blogs that people write, okay. um, present company excluded, yeah. of course. Um, you get there's it's just a tremendous amount of complete misinformation that's available to people who come in and say, "Yeah, I know all about that. I read this on the uh, Audio God blog, right. or Audio Asylum says this." Hmm. And you ask yourself, at least I ask myself, who are the people that are saying these things right what what do they know about this have they even heard have it? they even or even <laughs> if they have heard it right how with how many things under what circumstances so the thing i agree with you most about is you know a, a brick and mortar dealer doesn't d does this for fun to some extent i know that sounds crazy yes we want to make money but nobody in their right mind would go into selling high-end and audiophile components and systems for the purpose of making money. It's not a great way of doing it. Yes, they're <laughs> expensive, but really, you know, you, know, you can go work for Wall Street and you make a hell of a lot more money. Become a doctor and like fix noses, you'll make a hell of a <laughs> lot more money. You do this because you enjoy it. It's, mm -hmm. it's a passion. Mm -hmm. It's a disease. It's an addiction. And that's an addiction that is useful to our customers. A customer called me up and said, I've done this and this and this, and my system sounds bright and edgy. And I listened to his litany of equipment and what he's changed, what he had here and what he had that. I said, well, you know, the problem that you have is the DAC that you're using. Now, how did I know that that was the problem in the system? Because I know the DAC, I know the rest of the equipment, and I know the idiosyncrasies involved with it. He goes, well, how do you know that? I said, 42 years of listening and learning um, and he goes well are you sure and I went hey, I'm pretty sure and so I made a DAC recommendation to him and everything was fine he loved it it was terrific he didn't he didn't actually listen to it okay but I would never be able to have made that recommendation to him I wouldn't have the knowledge if I didn't have a place where I can sit down myself even when the customers aren't here mm -hmm and mess around with my equipment and see how these things work because I like to do that. Mm, yeah. It's not a box to me. You know, I get a new amplifier in, I salivate. I get a new pair of speakers that I think are hot. I get, I get aroused. <laughs> I do, I get aroused. I'm not gonna say what kind of arousal, it's not sexual. I get, 
uh, if I listen to music that that's really really like inspiring, the Beethoven, right? like that Beethoven that we listen to, right. the '63 Von Karajan recording, Ninth Symphony, Last Movement, the Choral Movement, it just takes your breath away. Oh my God! It makes yeah. you feel like, ooh, I'm powerful. I just love this. That's why I do it, and I guarantee you, that's why most people in the business do it. They do it because they love it, and that's not there in online purchasing. Mm. It can't be. But to come to where this should be, where this is going to start is: can high-end audio, the, meaning the companies that make high-end audio products, can they survive long-term with an ever-shrinking number of brick-and-mortar dealers? But a number of companies have opened up showrooms just to play their equipment. Obviously, B and O was the first one to start doing that, right. and it was a clever thing to do. If all you want to do is B and O, and the only experience you're interested in is the experience of the guy who has experience with B and O, right? But but not being able to have a place where people can do the experimentation that they need and the evaluation. Not having brick and mortar, I don't know how companies survive. I don't know how someone goes and buys a fifty thousand dollar power amplifier. I mean, a power amplifier that he wants to sound good, not just to show his friends. Um, I, I just can't imagine how that transaction goes. You know, you go to the website of the company that makes the fifty thousand dollar amplifier. Oh right. yeah, I've read about it. Right. It's really good. It looks really pretty in the pictures. Yeah, I'm going to put in my credit card and get that thing. It's like, really? No, I don't R think right. so. <laughs> I don't think that happens. Yeah, could, I really that's don't. That's not a working model. No. I think I get back to the hand-holding. I think people are afraid to make the wrong choice, right? There's a lot of insecurity about spending a lot of money on a piece of audio gear. And I think that the salesperson is, is a kind of a shrink. It's the hand-holding. It's making them feel good about it and comfortable. And you want secure. me to agree with you here? Yeah. Uh, to some extent, I think that's true. Um, yeah, you have to, you have to be a, a... I wouldn't describe it as a shrink. I would describe it more... It's more like being a life coach. <laughs> okay. It's an audio coach. Okay. I, I'm not... I, I need to focus on these specific things that, um, that you're interested in. And I need to listen beyond what she's saying uh, and try to understand your real meaning. Because, mm. um, you know, most people, most people are very uncomfortable with not knowing the mm. answer to something. Right. And breaking down the barriers of... Um, mistrust that that causes because if you know if, for instance I'll give you an example in my case if I'm going to buy a car and because um, I love fast cars but I know virtually nothing about how an engine works yeah so the guy starts telling me all about the engine and the hemis and this and all that stuff I must say hold, just hold it man I, I uh, is it going to drive fast let me drive it, right? So I've never bought a car without road testing it. I've had people suggest to me, I, you know, once years and years ago, I was foolish enough to buy a Ferrari. Um, and it was the most fun I ever had in my life. Um, but I wanted to road test it. And one dealer said to me, what do you need to road test it for? It's the finest thing in the world. I said, dude, if you want me to spend this much money, I need to get a feeling. Mm. I need to have the experience. So there's two ways of dealing with the customer's anxieties. Um, and it depends on the customer. The first is to listen to all the things they want to talk about, all their concerns, their fears. How's their mother doing? Will their wife like the way the, you know, the speakers look? You know, all of that sort of thing. Hold their hands and try to, you know, get them on your side. The other way of doing it also is to say very little and to just show them. Mm. I think if you, <clears throat> the first way is a good approach. But if you know that you've got the product 
the preparation and the sound that makes you as a dealer proud, that's really all you got to do. Hmm. And then let them tell you how good it is. Shut up and play the music. Play, shut up and play the music, but more so, let them, and that's really important, hmm. for you to tell somebody what it sounds like. Well, you know, you can answer a question and say, yeah, it sounds warm, it doesn't sound warm, whatever. The real thing is to get people to experience it and then express their own feelings about it. Mm. And that's where you can be a shrink. Mm. You can join them in their in the reality right. that they experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Again, not duplicatable on the internet. Impossible to duplicate on the internet. Yeah. Wholly I, impossible. Well doing doing the demo. Uh, it, it can't be done on the website. So as a complete system or a comparable system. So you're going to gonna laugh about this, right? Um, <laughs> recently, you will laugh I'm about laughing this. Already. You're laughing already. A customer said, asked me whether or not I could make an audio recording on my phone of the system so we could hear what it sounds like. That's very funny. Because <laughs> people ask me to do that all the time. Right. For and my years. reaction was, are you auditioning an iPhone? I mean, is what are you talking about? Right. It's like insane. Um, and sometimes you have to say no. And the thing about the internet, sometimes say no, you, you, you can't. Here's something the internet never says is no. Buy me, buy me, buy me. I don't care, says the internet, whether your speaker is going to blow up with this amplifier. And I don't care if this amplifier is going to overheat and meltdown if you use it on the speaker. I don't care. I'm just a box. You click it at your peril. I mean, yeah, you know, some websites do have human beings you can talk to. And That's true. Questions, yeah. And some of those human beings might be very knowledgeable. Right? Yeah, I have to grant them that. But I still very think few, by the would way. have kind of the breadth of knowledge and combination exactly. of things. Because they're not in a store. They haven't heard. Right. You know. Well, I don't know if you've noticed about um, millennials and Gen Xers, but they really aren't great with human contact. Okay. I, I know that's a, va a really bold and brash generalization, um, but if you walk around the streets and see people staring at their phones and not looking at other people, I think it gives a certain amount of credence to what I just I'm said. I'm starting to see a lot of people older than millennials and Gen Xers doing that. That's absolutely That's right. definitely <clears throat> happening. It's a spreading virus. <clears throat> absolutely. The, at the end of the day, however, the, this is, a, this is a, 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 an emotional and a physical experience. You know, listening to music is, is, is as much a, it's not just your ears that are involved, it's your entire body. You can't get that any place but in a showroom. You can't get, and you can't have your feelings validated. And that's the biggest job that I feel I have as a, as a, uh, a merchant and a high-end and audiophile dealer is to present what I think is the best solution for the customer and then to uh, validate their own impressions mm, because yeah. You know, did does that? Did I really hear that? And I hear, and this is a very common question. That seems to sound better. Does that really sound better? Mm. You know, the first time you listen, you don't trust. After it takes a while for anybody to be, you know, to 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 trust their own instincts and their own judgment about something that they're not familiar with doing. Right. It's like you need to develop palate for wine. You need to, it's to develop not an ear, but an experiential framework for audio. That experiential framework is a matter of ears, head, and heart. And that takes many years. And that's what we can offer people that you can't get on the internet from anybody. Mm. But <clears throat> the bigger question here to start with is, can high-end audio, meaning the industries, the companies that make this stuff, survive without a healthy uh, brick-and-mortar dealer base? I think the answer is no. The answer is no. And for the people out there who like this stuff, 
they have to really support their dealers. Now, when I've had these conversations with people who say, oh, I hate my local dealer in Cincinnati, he's a jerk, blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, but if you're going to spend that kind of money, uh, more than $10,000, get on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> Go to a city that has... We talked about this, you know, and that's exactly right. If you don't feel like you're getting the kind of service that mm -hmm. you think you deserve, if you can, aren't exposed to mm -hmm. the equipment that mm -hmm. you would like to be exposed to, yeah, get on a plane. Go fly to where, whatever you need to fly to to hear it. Right. And, you know, I don't think it, it occurs to people, but I think, again, if you're spending that kind of money, you, that's what you need to do. What does it cost? $500 to fly across the country? Right, so... Uh, it's you know, for a fifty thousand dollar amplifier or a hundred thousand dollar pair of speakers, yeah. you, know, you know, come. Typically, the places that 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 um, that have uh, components of that kind are major cities with lots of other fun things to do. <laughs> right. So you don't have to just fly for that purpose. You can bring the whole family. Right. You know, it's it, it's just amazing to me. I, I hear about people traveling miles and miles to pick up a dog. Right. Now, you know, I can pick up a dog at the local pound, <laughs> rescue a dog and be very happy. The dog will be happy. I'll be happy. I don't have to fly to some kennel in uh, South Carolina to pick up a show show dog, but people do do that. Yeah. Well, well why don't they, why, don't, why can't they fly to New York City to listen to the stereo that they may spend a fortune for with and which they'll have for a really long time? Yeah. Yeah, that's the other thing. This stuff lasts forever. I think those dealers that are still left, brick and mortar dealers, um, are really good. And they they really want to get you the system that you'll like. If for no other reason, and I don't think this is the main reason, if for no other reason then they want you to be happy so more people will come to them through you. But there's there's the sense that they'll of refer their that friends we, exactly and, their friends are for their friends and family. But even more important is the sense of satisfaction that at least that I get when I put together a really really just ball busting wonderful audio system, and I have a customer call me up after I've installed it and said, "Man, this is great! I just love this! I'm so happy." The sense of accomplishment. It's as good as it gets. It's as good as it gets, you know? That's why people do it. It's not just for the eggs. <laughs> well, Woody Allen reference. You think people would know that if you didn't say Woody Allen? Okay. Annie Hall. Annie Hall, the eggs. Yeah, yeah. All right. That's a good way to end. Great. My name is Steve Guttenberg. Our guest today is Andrew Singer at Sound by Singer in New York City, in case you couldn't figure that out. Um, we're good. So if you like what I do here, subscribe, share, like, do all the social media stuff, and I'll see you oh, again. Oh, yeah, and support your local dealer. And support your, support your local dealer. That's the most important message. If you're lucky to have a local dealer, support them. Otherwise, come see me, and or I'll take care of you. Or come see me, and say, well, well, stuff fails, come here.